Designing coherent and cohesive subpages. That's the name of the game for today's lesson and challenge. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create this upcoming shows page for this design right here, this layout that we've already worked on in different contexts throughout this course. So then I'm going to put you to the task to create your own cohesive subpage design that makes it feel like it's a consistent part of the experience going from the landing page to this new page, which is all gonna be about a curriculum list page. And so you're tasked with designing a curriculum page for this existing design. It's very important to understand how to utilize existing assets and design patterns to make sure that your subpages and everything feel coherent, cohesive, and consistent. So as always, make sure to subscribe if I could talk, and let's get started. All right, here is the design and here are the specs. Create a secondary page, create the upcoming shows page for this fictional landing page. Um, number two, it should show the total number of shows that are upcoming, okay? Um, so that's something that we have to de design for and plan for. And then third, create a vertical list with labels that show the date, location, and band name, okay? Each list item should also have a get tickets button. All right, so that's it. Those are the requirements for this page. Now it's up to us to create that sub page and lay out and design in a way that's great for UX, easy to use, and also in a way that makes the design feel seamless from any other page that they come and land on this page. From the landing page to this page, it should feel like the same brand. So we're gonna be reusing elements, colors, uh, topography, all that good stuff. Okay, so what I'll do to get this started here is I will simply replicate this, shift alt, left click, drag over, or just hit control D, and it will replicate it over here. And I'm just gonna start gutting this, uh, large areas of this uh, design. Now, um, when you replicate this, unfortunately it looks like I locked a few things. There we go. I'm just gonna delete pretty much all this stuff. Let me pull this up real quick. Yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff that was locked. There we go, um, or not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that's locked. Okay, so let me delete this. We'll delete this and this. Okay, so now we're pretty much starting just with the navigation because obviously we wanna hold the navigation, uh, keep it the same. So what I'm gonna do is, first thing, let's worry about the page title, which is going to be upcoming shows, all right? Right there. Now, we have a couple options here. We could try to use this font for the headline. Um, so let's just try that. I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to double click and we'll just say upcoming shows. Okay. So this particular font, I don't like the way it looks. Um, it looks cool here in the headline. Um, but if we were to use it for titles, they would all have to be uppercase. And I just, I think it's just a little bit too much. So what I'll do is use the other font that's present, which is Poppins. Can't go wrong with Poppins. I used that font for a really long time. I uh, Poppins right there. And I am just gonna make this regular upcoming shows. The size of this particular font, way too big for this page. You always have to think about what is going to be the size, the sizing of the, the headline, um, the, the, the actual title of each page. Uh, you wanna keep that consistent. And some, some of the uh, pages might have longer headlines or titles or something like that. So this would be way too big. It would, you know, if there were a few more words, it would just be consuming the whole page essentially. So we need to think about scale in appropriate fashion. Let's try 60 here and let's make that auto width. And this is a little bit better in terms of size. I probably wanna go much higher than this. Might even go lower than that. Yeah, somewhere around 66. I will also make this bold. All right. All right. So we got our upcoming shows. Now it mentioned we also need to show the total number of shows that are upcoming. So we could do this. There's a lot of different ways you could design for this sort of thing. Um, there are currently, uh, let's see, 48 or 40, yeah, 48 up upcoming shows. All right. So now. Visual hierarchy between your title and this little subtitle thing, uh, very important. Needs to, we're gonna make it regular and we're going to make it a lot smaller. Um, let's try like 26 and maybe we'll bold 48. There we go. Right around there is fine with me. Now, because I know their page is gonna be a little bit longer, I'm gonna take the frame, hold control and just pull it down. Okay. So now we need to actually show the list, which is list item number three. Create a vertical list with labels that show the date, location, and band name. 
Okay, so we could just keep on going in this blue section, um, or we could borrow from this this uh, design right here, and we can kind of wrap the list in this differently colored container, essentially. So if I do, do that, double click in there, we'll go ahead and delete uh, delete that stuff, and then we will also lock it. Okay, so now we have this area that we can kind of design this list in. And notice it says create a vertical list with labels. So labels will show up at top. So, all right, it's gonna have the date, location, and band. Date, location, and band. All right, so right bracket key, there we go, bring it to the front. And for the locations, I, I'm just gonna make them all uppercase. And there's a couple ways to do that. Like for instance, if I, take, if I say I date like this, we'll make it bold. Um, we could come over here and then just specify uppercase right there. So no matter what, it'll change everything to uppercase. Now the size is gonna be important. Um, for these, I'll make these 22. And I'll kind of just hold shift alt and push, pull these over. All right, location, and then also ban. All right, so I may end up changing these a little bit, but for now that's good. So for each band list or you know the upcoming show list, the row, uh, we can also encase that in its own little differently colored background container. So if I take the rectangle tool, typically you would use a frame for this and use auto layout and all that crap, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm trying to make this go as fast as possible. We could go a little bit darker. Ah, there we go. So that color code is 002992. Let me pull that up with a little bit of corner radius. All right, now we can put the actual label. So we can put in, um, let's say July 28th, 2025 or 2024, whatever. Um, now let's, re let's remove the uppercase thing. There we go. And we'll make this regular. Okay, so that seems like a good font size right there. So if I shift alt to uh, replicate the location, we'll just say is Cleveland. Ohio, and then also we'll replicate this. Um, the band is gonna be um, Twisted Kitten. <laughs> I literally just made that up. And maybe, um, you know, maybe these are clickable links. I, maybe we make this bold and then maybe put a little link, external link icon. So if I right click, go to Iconify, which we've already covered, and we type in something like um, link, we might find something, or I, uh, external yeah okay so yeah we could get like an external icon sort of situation here pull that in let's put it right there make it black for selection colors we can just put this in an auto layout real quick there we go okay so it looks pretty good to me okay so twist a kitten, um, and then finally a get tickets button right there, all right? Each item should have a get tickets button. All right, so for this, I think I'll just take this um, button component, paste that sucker in over here, <laughs> and then we'll right click, I'm gonna detach the instance, and then I'm going to, um, I think it would be too much to have like a really strong call to action with a white background that demands so much visual attention when we have a bunch of elements underneath. So to make it stand out a little bit less, we can just remove the fill and then change the text to white and then change the text inside of it to get tickets. All right, and then when we do that, we'll kind of uh, scale this down just a bit so it fits nice and proper inside of there. Yeah, kind of like that. There we go, that is our very first row and I actually like it. So if I just select it all, shift alt, drag down, just to duplicate it, maybe like right around here. There we go. So that's our list. Of course, you could sit here and make these all unique if you wanted to, but you get the point. Um, so another thing that, let me find real quick, cause I, I did lock that layer. There we go. 
So now we get, just need to get this sized up appropriately. These don't have to be 100% contrast white. We could actually grab the background and just kind of add a little bit of blue, and that way it really separates the labels from the list itself and makes the list much more the focal point rather than just the labels above it. And I think that's a pretty good uh, portion to design for. Um, I probably, if I had more time, I would do pagination, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, and then little dots, you know. But I'm trying to make this go a little bit quicker um, so that you basically get the idea of what I'm trying to convey here. Um, and in this case, here, let me pull this down. You know, we could, we could actually design for a little bit so for some other stuff potentially. Like, um, let's see here. We could take this. Yeah, let me get that back over here. We could get rid of the fill. You know, these this this down here could perhaps could be like little testimonials that are coming across from people who visited the shows. That would be cool. A little slider of sorts. Um, oopsie. I shouldn't have done that because I ripped it from there without replicating it. No big deal. Um, and then we take this over here, for instance. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. Now I'm just being silly. Here we go. Okay, so there's our sub page, a nice seamless sub page where, you know, if you were to go from this page, of course, if we had the stupid features down there still, to this page, it all feels cohesive and coherent with each other. It's consistent. All right, so now it is your turn. All right, so let's go to the actual lesson 12 secondary pages challenge right down here. Okay, so you've seen this design before, if, hopefully if you've been following along up to this point, and now your code, your, your code, you're, you're tasked with creating a curriculum page right up here, this little curriculum link. So just for the, this is a fictional Laravel, which is a um, coding platform, a PHP um, platform. So it's like a course website. Um, and this is, you're, you're tasked with designing the actual curriculum page right here. All right, so here are the requirements for you to submit this, and all the submission de instructions are in the YouTube description. So create the actual curriculum page. Number two, at the top, this page should highlight the fact that we have the highest rated curriculum for Laravel developers. So somewhere near the actual title, curriculum, or our curriculum up here, maybe underneath it, a very small hero section where you're just emphasizing, or even just a subtitle, um, or a sub, you know, yeah, sub subtitle where you're just mentioning that you have the highest rated curriculum for Laravel developers. That's the first thing. Um, number three, the primary focus of the page should be the curriculum list. So that's the main you know, element. Just like this primary focus right here is this band list. Um, each curriculum item is a chapter from the course and each item should show the, chap the curriculum chapter title, a description, and a number of lesson modules within it. Okay, so that's important. You have the actual title, that's one thing a description, that's two things, and then the lesson modules that are within that chapter, that's a part of that curriculum. So that's three different things that you need to design for in list format, all right? So then design at least for five different curriculum chapters. Like up here, we did five, one, two, three, four, five as well. And so I want you to design for that information and try to make it cohesive meaning it's going to be consistent. You're, re you're reusing elements in an intelligent manner from this existing design right here. And you're making sure everything makes sense in terms of UX, ease of use, and all that good stuff, good UI fundamentals. So I'm excited to see what you all come up for the curriculum page here. Uh, make sure to submit it. Check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet for the full UI UX course. And of course, as always, I'll see you tomorrow with the reviews.